Hello and welcome to Unit 4 about sign language broadcasting. My name is Marta Bosch Baliarda and this is my sign name. In this unit, we are going to talk about sign languages as natural languages and also about the best practices uh, for broadcasting sign language, either as uh, sign language interpreted programs or sign presented programs. We will also discuss the translation and interpreting process for media uh, broadcasting in sign language. And finally, we will introduce the possibilities of sign language technologies through signing avatars. Finally, uh, in the last section of this video, you will find all the references to be, that we will mention throughout uh, this lesson. So let's start. What is sign language? In this section, uh, we will talk about the main features of sign languages as natural languages, and we will discuss uh, about the basic uh, status of these languages, socially and linguistically. Uh, also, it is very important to bear in mind that there are still a lot of misconceptions and preconceptions uh, about sign languages and uh, their users, deaf signing uh, users. And we will also compare uh, and discuss the differences between natural deaf sign languages and other communicative systems, such as alternative systems uh, that use or that are partially based on uh, signing and lexical signs. There are around 70 million sign language users around the world. And uh, we have to bear in mind that when we talk about sign language users, we are talking, of course, about deaf users, deaf people, but also deaf blind people and sometimes hearing people, for example, uh, relatives and professionals that work within and with the deaf communities. Uh, another important thing when we talk about deaf sign language users is that not all deaf people use sign language. Some deaf people use other communicative means, such as spoken language or alternative communicative systems that we will explain later on in this section. Uh, in the literature, sometimes to differentiate these two linguistic communities within uh, deaf people, we will find deaf with a capitalized D to refer to the deaf signers uh, and deaf people that are culturally part of the deaf communities and uh, deaf uh, with a lowercase uh, d uh, to refer to hard of hearing people or hearing impaired people that use spoken language or other forms of communication rather than sign languages. Uh, another important thing is that sometimes when uh, non-professionals use uh, the term deaf and dumb to refer to the deaf people, to the deaf signers, uh, it is important to know that this uh, terminology is no longer used and is considered to have negative connotations because deaf signers, they are not dumb, they can speak, but they choose to uh, they choose to sign as their primary uh, means of communication. It's not that they cannot talk, it is that they talk in a language that doesn't use an auditory uh, modality, but a gestural and visual modality. And also, uh, if uh, they want to, most deaf people can use their voices to communicate too. When we talk about the linguistic status of sign languages, we have to go back to the 1960s when the groundbreaking um, publication of sign language structure by William Stockey uh, was published. In this uh, publication, um, it was clear that sign languages had fully fledged grammars, including phonology, morphology, and syntax. So sign languages are closer to spoken languages in their structure uh, than to mimicking or uh, uh, gestural communication, for example. Sign languages are natural languages just like uh, any spoken language. 
uh, but they differ in the language modality they use. Sign languages are visual gestural languages and uh, they use articulators like the hands, the arms, the facial expression like eyebrow position, mouthings, uh, head tilts, and upper body parts like shoulder and torso positions to convey uh, meaning and grammar in all the linguistic levels. For example, um, this is similar to what happens with spoken languages, but the body parts involved are different. In spoken languages, we use the vocal tract, mouth, lips, uh, tongue to convey these patterns. And uh, in sign languages, it's just other body parts. But the way they are conveyed, the structure is similar in both uh, language modalities. So, uh, sign languages are fully-fledged natural languages and uh, in all levels, like communicative level, cultural level, grammatically, etc. So, for example, uh, maybe you have never seen uh, that before, but there are art forms like poetry in sign languages. And um, I want to show you a beautiful uh, poetry in sign language of the Netherlands that is signed by the famous uh, deaf poet Wim Emmerich that uh, had just recently uh, deceased. The poem is called Growth. The name of the poem is Growth. And you will see uh, the beautiful visual patterns that are conveyed uh, using uh, this sign language. I hope you have uh, enjoyed uh, Wim's Emmerich poetry. Now, if you want to know more about uh, sign languages as natural languages, as natural linguistic systems, you can read Sandler's and Lilo Martin's reading that you can have uh, access in this online version. I hope you uh, read this uh, text and uh, learn more about these uh, natural languages. Okay, now that we are at the end of the first section, I have uh, a question for you. Sign languages used by deaf communities around the world are A, fully-fledged natural human languages, B, they are basic communica communication systems without a complex grammar, or C, they can only communicate utterances with simple vocabularies and no abstract meanings. The correct answer is, of course, that natural sign languages are fully-fledged natural human languages. The correct answer is A. Now, we will talk about sign language misconceptions or preconceptions that affect both the languages, but also their users, namely deaf signers or deaf sign language users. So for example, maybe you're wondering why I'm using sign languages in the plural. Maybe you're thinking that sign language is the same in every country. Uh, and maybe uh, you're wondering after the question you just answered, that sign languages can only express concrete ideas and not abstract ideas. Or maybe you're thinking, um, is it really a language or is it closer to pantomime or mimicking? So we will try to talk uh, about these uh, issues involving uh, sign languages and uh, their uses. So, um, this question, is sign language a universal system, is probably one of the misconceptions that are uh, widely uh, accepted. But no, this is not the case. There is not only one sign language for all countries. 
So far, linguists have described 138 different national sign languages, and they have been, uh, they have been included in Ethnologue, which is the catalogue of the world's languages. Here you can find the web link to access the complete list and some basic information about these different sign languages. Of course, we expect that more sign languages are described and discovered as linguistic research about the deaf communities around the world is uh, continued uh, and developed. But uh, we said there's not a universal uh, sign language, but is there any form of international sign language? And uh, that is not exactly an international sign language, like a uniform sign language understood by all deaf signers, but um, there is an international sign system. Um, this international sign system is uh, invented so that deaf signers around the world, for example, when they meet in conferences or uh, in international meetings, they can communicate using a very basic uh, vocabulary that is understood by uh, all the trained users. So this uh, sign language, uh, international sign system, is not understood by all deaf users, uh, even though the visual properties of sign languages may help uh, the signers' communicative skills when they face uh, deaf users that use a different national sign language. If you want to know more about the international sign system, you can access the EUD, the European Union of the Deaf website, and you can find more information about this international sign system. So if there's not uh, one unique standard universal sign language, is there one sign language for every spoken language? Of course, I just uh, mentioned earlier that there have been uh, described 138 different sign languages. And uh, for spoken languages, this, uh, the number is much, much bigger, like around 5,000 spoken languages around the world. So the answer is no, there is not a different sign language for every spoken languages. But the reason, the main reason, that the number of sign languages and spoken languages is so different is that uh, sign languages are not a sign version of spoken languages. So sometimes what we find is that there's more than one sign languages within a country. And that is the case, for example, in Spain, when we have two distinct sign languages, uh, Spanish Sign Language, or LSE, and Catalan Sign Language, or LSC. But also, the opposite case is possible, where different sign languages exist for one spoken language. And um, the most famous case is for uh, English-speaking countries. So for example, in the UK, they use BSL or British Sign Language. And in the United States of America, they use ASL or American Sign Languages, uh, American Sign Language. And these two sign languages are mm, barely understandable. So they are not historically related. The vocabularies are very different, and they differ also in their structures. And uh, of course, the same spoken languages, that is spoken English, is used in both countries. Actually, American Sign Language is related to uh, French Sign Language, LSF because the history of the deaf education in the United States is related to the French uh, teachers for the deaf. Uh, another important fact is that sign languages, just like spoken languages, uh, vary. They have variation. So different regional dialects can be found within uh, one national sign language. Uh, so we have to bear in mind that Sign languages, they originate wherever a deaf community arises, and their origin is not related to, spoken, uh, to the spoken languages of the territory. So the grammars uh, are different, the lexical items are different, and uh, their history is different too. So now you can see 
an example of two different sign languages that are used within the American territory. This is a video developed by the University of Hawaii, and you will see American Sign Language and Hawaii Sign Language compared uh, with basic vocabulary and basic uh, syntactic structures. I hope you enjoy the video. Enjoy the video. Father. Mother. Black. White. Dog. Pig. Another misunderstanding or misconception is that sign language is sometimes uh, mixed with finger spelling. So is really sign language finger spelling? That is, deaf sign language users use their hands and the shapes of their fingers to spell out words in air. And the answer is no. Sign language users are not, are not spelling out words when they communicate. But finger spelling has, uh, has sometimes been used as a code system to replace spoken languages whenever a deaf person cannot access the spoken language. And uh, it has been used to supplement or replace um, spoken language and teach speech or print. So finger spelling is one of these alternative communication systems. And uh, sign-based alternative and communication systems, sometimes uh, they use the same signs of the national sign language of the territory, but they represent the grammar and the structure of the spoken language in the manual form. So they are not following the sign language grammar. Uh, sign-based uh, alternative communication systems are invented systems by hitting individuals, for example, hitting teachers for the deaf or speech therapists. And uh, this contrasts with the natural origin of sign languages, which are not invented, but they are developed within the deaf communities. These sign-based communication systems or code systems are used for pedagogical purposes, and they are barely used outside the classroom by deaf people. So it's just uh, like a technique to access print, to learn uh, speech, but they are not used in a natural communication environment outside uh, schools. So as I mentioned earlier, sometimes uh, when we see a person using these sign-based systems or a person signing, if we are not uh, native signers or if, if we, are not, uh, we don't have a basic command of sign language, it is very difficult to differentiate what they are uh, actually using, but, uh, and also because um, the signs that they use uh, are the same lexical signs, although the grammar is not the same, because sign-based uh, code systems follow the spoken language uh, grammar, and uh, sign languages have their own distinct grammar systems. So uh, some of the most common or widespread communication uh, systems or augmentative systems are finger spelling or uh, what is called Rochester method or visible English. Rochester method is uh, used in, in the United States and visible English. It's uh, the common name for the same method in, in the UK. And this method consists of spelling out every single word uh, in, in a spoken sentence using the finger spelling. That is the alphabet uh, that uses the, the manual signs. Uh, there's also a sign-supported English or bimodal systems or signed English, which is using the lexical signs of the national sign language, following the structure and the word order and grammar of the spoken uh, languages. And uh, barely all national sign languages can be used to um, produce or invent these 
bimodal system, and this is widely uh, spread and used uh, for pedagogical purposes, as I mentioned earlier. And also uh, another uh, amantisism system that helps lip reading or speech reading is cute speech, which is uh, not based on the lexical items of the sign language, but just indicate different positions so that um, sounds that use the same lip pattern, for example, M, P, and B, can be differentiated by adding a manual uh, sign that can help discriminate these um, this sounds. So the systems, unlike sign languages, uh, it's very important, they do not provide, they do not provide a natural language input for deaf children. They are very good systems for pedagogical purposes to access speech, to access print, but um, using these uh, systems to replace the linguistic input of a natural sign language could have a very negative impact on the deaf child's linguistic communicative development and skills. So it is important that deaf kids have access to a natural language, either a sign language or a spoken language. And if you want to read more about this topic, please uh, read uh, this reference about Bavillier uh, 2003. So um, the differences between these communication systems and sign languages is that while natural languages arise spontaneously and spread by means of unrestricted interaction, they can be used in all any communicative uh, context for any communicative purposes. Um, artificial or device communication systems are invented by specific individuals, educators, for example, and can be used only in specific contexts for specific communicative uh, uses. And here you can see the full reference of uh, Bavillier's um, uh, reading, and you will also find a reference in the reference section at the end of the video. Okay, so now uh, we will answer question number two. Sign languages around the world, A, are invented systems by hearing professionals and are a manual version of the spoken languages. B, have similar vocabularies because they are partially based on the International Sign System, or ISS. And C, are natural linguistic systems that have developed independently from spoken languages wherever a deaf community is found. And the correct answer is C. Sign languages around the world are natural linguistic systems. They have developed independently from the spoken languages, they have different grammars, and they arise wherever a deaf community is found.